I want to show you three different ways to get your images out of Cricut Design Space. I'm going to start by uploading a nice pattern. I have some really pretty background patterns. I want to keep this complex so it does all of this coloring. And then I'm just going to go apply and continue and save this as a print then cut. And let's add that to our canvas. Now I'm going to type up my name. And this is actually the font I use in my logo. So if I scale that up and then I use slice, and that is going to cut my name out of the pattern. So you can see that could be a really fun kind of pattern to put on to a shirt or maybe a tumbler and kind of have my logo in a fun springtime coloring. Another way that you can apply some patterns is if you change your design to print then cut and then click on the color, you can actually go find patterns. So I would apply this pattern to my name. Ooh, that's kind of fun. I actually like that one better than the original one I did. Okay, we're going to go with this. So if I wanted to use this image for sublimation, or maybe I wanted to send this to a company like my craft source, where you can upload an image and have them do the print for you on a direct to film transfer. And then all you have to do is press it. But I gotta get this image out of design space. So how can I do that? Well, there's a couple different ways. And after I do the different variations, we're gonna look at the quality of the images. So the first way is to get rid of the grid so that you just have a white background. Because as we know, printers can't print white. So that if you have something with a white background, if you use it for sublimation, you're not gonna have a problem. With direct to film transfers, you are gonna to want to make that background transparent before you send it to print. Okay, so one way to get rid of the grids is to click in this box up here. And you can see the grid went away. The other way is go up to your name, your profile, and go under settings. And you can click on canvas and say no grid. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you get there. Basically, you want a plain white background. Then you're going to take a screenshot. I'm using a snipping tool. If you're doing this on your phone or your iPad, you could just do a screen capture. And that would work too. So now I'm going to save this over to a folder. Because I want to have all of these variations in one folder so I can show you which one looks the best. OK, so that's one way. I like my grid, so I'm going to turn that back on. The next way would be to move forward with this as a print and cut design. But instead of actually printing it from our printer, we're going to save it as a PDF. So what I had to do was reduce the size because if you look over here, when I had it really big, I'm getting an error saying this is too big for print and cut. So I'm just going to size it down until I get within the print then cut parameters. I'm going to hit save just because I don't want to lose this. This is pretty. Now when I click make and we're going to pretend like we're actually printing this out, but really what we want to do is make a PDF. So if I click continue and say send to printer, I'm going to click on Microsoft Print to PDF. Then 
when I click print, it's preparing it and you can see it opens up another window. That's where I'm going to go down to where I'm saving these. So this is the Schlamash print to PDF version. It's saying I have to turn on my Cricut in order to cut, but I don't want to cut this. I just was trying to create a PDF or something that I could access for the image. So let's cancel that. So while I was editing the video, I noticed I made a mistake. I left the bleed on when I made the PDF. So we're going to do that again. So let's go make. Continue. So what the bleed does is it makes the whole design fatter. And that's so that when it goes to cut, you never have those white borders. So since we're looking to do this for sublimation, I'm going to turn off the bleed and print. And now I can just save this new PDF right over the top of the old one. When you're watching the video later on, when I am sharing how the images look, you might notice that one looks fatter. That is the one with the bleed in it. So sorry. I'm just going to try this. If it doesn't work, I won't use this video. So if you want to get rid of these registration marks in your PDF, go under draw. Have your pen set for white, bring the thickness up. And now I can color over these. And it's really nice that they're just the little corner pieces now because it's less to color over than when we used to have the full, um, the full outline. So now I can go save. And I'm going to open that PDF back up. And now I don't even have those registration marks. So now this is really perfectly set up to do a print project like a sublimation or a direct to film transfer. Now for the third way. I am going to go and open up a file explorer. I'm going to go to the C drive on my computer. I am using a Windows computer, so if you're on a Mac, I'm not really sure how to do this. I'm hoping to find someone with a Mac that can help me with that. But on your Windows computer, you're going to go to Users. Pick the right user profile, and then under the user profile, you see there's a Cricut Design Space, so let me click on that. So let's zoom in here so you can get a better look at the files. This kind of goes down a rabbit hole. So hold on. So if I click on local data, I have no idea what these numbers mean, but this is today's date. So if I click on that and go under canvas, there's a whole bunch of them, but let's Look at the details of them. Okay, this one says it was last modified today. So I'm gonna guess this is the image. So let's open up that preview and there it, it is. So this is a PNG file. So I am going to copy this and then I'm gonna go back to that folder that I made and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to change this one to Sean Mosh from C Drive. So now we have three different ways that we get this image. So now I could send any one of these to be printed to use for sublimation or to use for a direct-to-film transfer. 
So now I want to open these up and start to look at the size and quality of each one of these images. Remember, when I open the PDF, you are going to see the registration marks because I didn't do that until after the comparison. And the original image that I did this um, PDF with is also has the bleed. So that's why it looks kind of thicker. But for this design, it's not that bad. The one thing I do like about this one, the one we found on the C drive, it is a transparent background. So I wouldn't have to remove the background. I'm zooming way in just so we can look at, it's kind of pixelated. So that means it's got fuzzy edges. Let's zoom in on this one. I actually feel like this one's better. Oh, that's fine. Where's my zoom? So I'm trying to zoom into the same area. I actually feel like the PDF is the most crisp, clear image. It was at this exact moment that I realized I left the bleed on when making the PDF. So I made the second one and now we can compare with the bleed off. See, now you get to see my mistakes. Okay, so here's all my options. I feel like the PDF is the best one, don't you? Now, depending on how you're going to use this, you might have to go remove that background. But that's showing you three different ways to get your design out of Cricut Design Space. So make sure you stay tuned because in a future video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to print these and it's not sublimation. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.